the things uh, that the party feels was a mistake in the Karnataka election was waiting for the final month or so to declare its candidate list and that of course led to rebellion in some sections and so on. So at least in these 79 seats out of 230 that they've declared, uh, A, these are Congress bastion seats and B, they've introduced some heavyweights, MPs and central ministers, etc. in the hope that their individual candidacy can sort of blunt uh, the Congress's strength in those seats. But I also want to get a quick word in from Arunima, who's joining us from the Election Commission. Uh, so the last time it happened, if I remember correctly, uh, Arunima, I think Chhattisgarh went to polls a first in the first couple of phases, and then the other two states uh, went on a single day. Are we looking at something similar this time around as well? What are the, the tentative sort of, because here in television, we're always obsessed about counting day, about result day. So are we tentatively looking at early December for uh, counting day? See, the elections for all the states are being announced together. The Mizoram is one of the states uh, where the duration of the assembly actually ends in December. All the other states are, uh, you know, the duration is up to January. But if you're going to club Mizoram with all the other states, then of course uh, you will have to ensure that counting happens uh, in the in uh, in in time for Mizoram assembly uh, to to uh, get together as well. Uh, as far as the other uh, states are concerned, Chhattisgarh, for for reasons of security, has always seen two phase elections. One phase sees the entire Bastar area go to polls, and the second phase, the rest of uh, Chhattisgarh. Madhya Pradesh, last time around, saw I think 28th of November was the date of polling for Madhya Pradesh, single phase. Rajasthan a week later in December. So this time Diwali is just around the corner, around the same time. So will uh, that that be a factor when the EC takes a decision? Do you want, it's a big festival, uh, you know Diwali is a big festival in Madhya Pradesh in Rajasthan. Uh, so do you want to take, keep that into in, in mind while you uh, you know take that decision? Uh, politically speaking, everyone is just, just uh, contemplating, uh, you know, who Whose Vanvas is really going to end? Kamal Nath believes his Gaddi was taken away from him, uh, not not by following the right means. Uh, so will it be, you know, his comeback from Vanvas, as Congress is calling it? In Rajasthan, Ashok Gelot is trying to bend the rules. It has always been one term for BJP, one term for Congress. If it's a single phase elections there, uh, and model code of conduct kicks in from today. So no more announcements of any new welfare measures or freebies, as the BJP calls them. Has Ashok Gelot government battered in the slog over enough uh, to take them, uh, you know, through the lines, uh, World Cup round the corner, so, you know, cricket analogy, you, you know, makes sense there. But we're all waiting. Uh, just, if you give me 30 seconds, I'll just step out and show you. It's a full house here at the Election Commission. Not just the Chief Election Commissioner, but the two ECs and all the other officers in charge. They're all expected to take stage here in about, uh, you know, half an hour from now. Uh, and we are expecting the decision about the date of counting and the date of polling to come last. So bear with us for another hour at least. All right. Uh uh, we'll come back to you, Arunima, as that uh, press conference begins. But Raul, one other factor that will be at play is, of course, this whole business of caste censors, OBC dominance, uh, for example, and I'll show this in the filter, uh, you know, in, in a moment. Uh, Shivrat Singh Chauhan rightfully says that he's the biggest OBC leader in Madhya Pradesh. Mr. Modi, of course, is the biggest OBC leader in the country. But this whole caste census in Bihar, has that sort of put a spanner in the works for the BJP? How are they going to respond to this? Uh, I think this election, if you really look at it as a top line, one single line is Mandal 2.0 versus Kamandal 2.0. Mm. Remember, when you talk about Madhya Pradesh, you talk about a state where the BJP has perhaps the most intensive ground network in place. And it's been there initially. Yeah. The state of, at one point, it was Madhya Bharat, if you remember. That's where the real genesis of the Jansang actually happened. So they have very deep roots. The problem, however, has been with, uh, in the recent past, twofold. One, and remember also, in this particular state, the BJP was very quick to project OBC leaders. Yeah. So from Uma Bharti and then, of course, the chief minister there at that time, all of them were OBC leaders. So there has been a history of already trying to look at the caste equations from a different way. Now, the point here about the larger question about whether the caste census, etc. will come into play, of course, because that's fundamentally what the Congress has thrown its real lot behind, that yeah. narrative that, look, the BJP is waffling on the caste census because it, it's not intrinsically open to the idea of social mobility, etc., etc., being a Brahmin party, but it's going to be very difficult for the Congress to run that campaign there, given the fact that the Prime Minister itself is an OBC. And he is, whether we like it or not, a very popular leader yeah. across North India at the very least. Yeah. Uh, so, all elections are now turning into 
mini personality contests, mm -hmm. whether it is at the state level or at the center. And you have a situation where both in Rajasthan and in Madhya Pradesh, personalities have influence in clusters. Therefore, it makes sense to not project any one individual. Mm -hmm. If you have um, uh, uh, a vote constituency behind Pilot, for example, in the Congress, you also have one behind Gehlot. Similarly, Mr. Chahan and other leaders of the BJP, like Mr. Sindhya, are dominant in various clusters. Yeah. It makes sense to really clutch, you know, uh, weave a tapestry, a larger tapestry together. And that brings in, actually, the element of uh, diversity and caste. Both these particular states, we forget, there is a narrative that is playing out while it might be a little subliminal right now, mm -hmm. but there is an element of Hindutva consolidation that is always at play in both these particular states. And remember, there is a, for the lack of a better word, a war raging right now, Israel, Palestine, yep. that issue will form a subtext when you actually see the BJP hitting the ground. Remember, these were two states where there has been already a modicum of campaigning by the Prime Minister and he has touched upon the Congress's propensity to appease. Yeah. So again, this Kamandal card will be played and the test will be whether Mandal remains relevant today or will the BJP be able to sort of weave together a larger narrative under Kamandal. Yeah. Let's see. Let, let's